It's going to be a 15 minute meeting. We talked about in real estate, there's a time to work hard, there's a time to work smart. There's a time to do both. What's, a, what's an example of working smart? That's in a buyer's market? Maybe. What's an example of working smart? Following up with your clients, entering them into a CRM, not losing past clients, making at least one phone call a day to some past client, just to say hi. We have to remind people that we're still in the business. It's smart to keep in touch with people that you've already earned the right to do business with. When you've collected a commission check, you've done your job. You've satisfied a buyer or seller or both. You have earned the right to call them from time to time. What's from time to time? Once a month, once every couple of months, just keep in touch. People are really flattered when you call and say, hey, how's your baby? How's, how's little Abilene? I heard your dog was sick. What happened? Did they recover? Be personal with your people. That's working smart. They know you're in real estate. They're already expecting you to jam something down their throat or remind them that you want referrals. Just call and say hi. Do it through a text. That's working smart. What's working hard? Going door to door. Doing mail outs. Is that effective and productive? I don't know. Sometimes. But I think that what we have to be is very intentional not accidental. I think we do things that are accidental, and I think we do things that are intentional. You have to figure out what works for you and do it intentionally. One of the big things we talked about with this lead generation program, are we being busy or productive? Are we being intentional or accidental? I think some of what we're doing is accidental. I want to be more intentional. Zillow is very intentional for us. It intentionally brings buyers to us on a specific property that we can captivate, and if we're knowledgeable and good on the phone, we can then work and, and, and create buyers. Open houses, I cannot stress the importance of open houses enough in this buyer's market. And if you don't embrace that, you're gonna watch your income continue, continually go down. It's the only place where you have a captive audience where people are coming to you where you don't have to reach out and grab them. I don't understand why we're not more excited about open houses. Case in point, yesterday, Caitlin's at Upland. Slow day, she calls up, man, it's dead. I get it. Properties for sale all around it, right? Mm -hmm. And it's hard to be in an open house for four hours when, when nobody's coming in, and beautiful outside, and all your friends are out doing stuff. Last day at Rodeo, a million reasons why we shouldn't be there. I get it, I get it. Hard, hard for us too, trust me. There's things we want to be doing. We're locking up, in rolls this beautiful Mercedes, very sharp looking guy jumps out, okay? Tell us the story. He um, moved back from Singapore about a year ago, is living in the Kirby collection, right over here. His mother just moved in with him, um, and so he needs a place, because he hates to commute from over here, mm -hmm. and Really, he said anywhere between three and seven hundred is his. And when does he need it? By mid May. And is he pre approved? Yes. Who's he pre approved with? I didn't know who he was. Wells Fargo. Who's he work for? He works for Comfort Phillips. Exxon Mobil. Exxon. Where does he work? Energy Quarter. Oh, sorry, Spring. Spring, Texas. Spring. He wants to be closer to Spring. He rolls into the Upland Open House. He needs a one story home or a home with an elevator. He'd like a little bit of a yard with a pool. May we show you properties? Yes. When are you available? Weeknights or next weekend? Needs to move by mid-May. What's the date today? <laughs> when does he need to buy something if he's going to move in by mid-May? Now. Now. He doesn't have an agent. He rolls into the open house as we're closing up, and he agreed to let us work with him. $700,000 deal, potentially. Let's do the math real quick. 3% is $21,000. Let's say Caitlin goes out of town and she splits it with us 50-50 or any one of you. It's 11,000 aside, 10,500 aside, if it all works out like that, right? What if it's an 80-20 split? Sounds like about $17,000 to me. Didn't you just get one of those? That's nice getting those $700,000 deals, isn't it? Rolls up to a $399,000 open house 
And now potentially we get to work with them as a $700,000 buyer. So, so right after eight hours of zero people walking in, worth it potentially. <laughs> so let's do the math. Let's do the math. Now you spend eight hours with them, that's 16 hours for $11,000. Do that math for me. You are talking about $800, $700 an hour. You're expensive. Yeah. <laughs> Now, come on, I mean, that's attorney money, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. And, and that's because we were at the open house, we found a little common denominator, we started talking to them, spent some time with them. That's what's coming into the open houses, guys. Now, you can tell me that everybody comes in as a realtor. Okay, I get that too. I had a Zillow call last week. They called me on the phone, they were talk wanting the listing agent. As a matter of fact, I know the listing agent, and unfortunately, he's excellent. They mentioned his name. He knows the heights. He's, he's one of the top realtors out there. Had already talked to him, and I said, look, if you want to see that house, I got to tell you, that's a great realtor. They really know the heights. But if you want to see other homes, I'm happy to help you, and I know the heights pretty well myself. In addition, it's sometimes difficult for the listing agent to present a really aggressive offer right. because it could insult the seller. When we, as the listing agent, have told that seller what that home should sell for in most cases. Or we at least supported the price, we endorsed it, we're working together to get it. I said, look, I'm a good negotiator. I'm gonna negotiate hard for you. It's easier for a buyer's agent to go in with an aggressive offer. I didn't say low, aggressive. What's aggressive? This guy needs to move in July. Home's been on the market 275 days. It's March 15th. Does that seller wanna sit around for 90 days? But I can still negotiate aggressively for them. Mm -hmm. Couple comments. I can play the recording for you. He decided to work with us. He's flying in from Switzerland. We're going to meet him Wednesday morning. $1.5 million home. Started out only wanting to talk to the listing agent. Now, that doesn't mean he has an agent. That means he doesn't really want to work with an agent. But after working with him a little bit, I was able to win him over. Yesterday, had you not been there, he would have just drove off and bought a house from someone somewhere for 700,000. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we'll get them, but it's a great opportunity. It's exciting to wake up the next day knowing you got a 700,000 hour buyer who's, who's with a great company, who just moved here, his lease is up, he's pre-approved. Are you kidding me? I, I'd give $5,000 to that lead if I knew he was gonna buy from me. For sure I'd do that. Okay, right, let's talk about what the meeting's about. Besides the fact you guys should jump all over these open houses. And by the way, if you do Harold, know about Hawthorne. Rebecca, this week I want you to put an inventory list together of all Camelot's inventory. So when you're at an open house, let's have that sheet, let's hand them out. Okay? All right. There's four things you need to do every day until the market really slows down, which is probably next time we're going to see a slowdown, September, October, when kids all go back to school. Think about networking, partnerships, postings, and learn and teach. Every time you learn something, like you just learned this today, in five minutes, post something. Network. You need to be on all these social medias. This is where all the business is going now, okay? Networking, Alignable, LinkedIn, all of them. Now somebody tell me that LinkedIn isn't good because it's all businesses. Somebody tell me that all these different networking sites aren't great spots because it's just other businesses. Just say it. It's not. Okay, let's see in a minute. When you network, you remind people of what you do for a living. And when you teach somebody something, they see you as a what? Expert. Learn, teach, post, be an expert. People will reach out to you. I got one for you. Put on your networking sites to your client base and in your CRM. Taxes are coming around, right? They're starting to get their notifications that their taxes are going up. They're going to protest their taxes. They're going to let them go. Why don't you offer all your past clients a free CMA on their home? Take five minutes. Five minutes. That's working smart. You're staying in front of them and you're earning their business. You gotta give to get, you gotta give to get, you gotta give to get. When you give, you get their attention and you get the relationship. And you've earned the right to call them when it's time to sell and ask them for their business if every year you're doing a CMA. 
How long would does it really take you to do a CMA? It's five minutes. You can do it on the phone with them. You don't have to go out of your way to do it. My husband told me to do the same thing as he does property tax commercial. But um, I, I did it. I belong to the Bel Air. I'm sorry, do you mind if I talk? I, go ahead. I belong to the Bel Air Business Association, and I had to do a elevator speech thing. And in it, I said, I will help you with your property taxes. And that's what I, was, I talked to him about, the CMA. And I saw some people's eyes perk up. I'm like, oh, I did something. It's because you just have to educate them. Because a lot of people don't protest their taxes. Right. And they're ridiculous. With our MLS and HCAD, you start with HCAD, print that, you can get on a computer and do a CMA in about three minutes. Mm -hmm. You really could. You could print it and send it to them. When you give people that information, you're giving them a valuable resource that they don't have access to. And you're, you're reminding them that you're the expert. And you're showing them that even after you've got your little commission check, that you're willing to work with them. That's important, because most people feel like after that commission, you're gone, you're done, you're out, it's over. Restaurants would be out of business if they didn't have a referral program. What's their referral program? Coupons, good service, specials, emails. I get something from Capital Grow almost every day, I promise you. Grottos, you go to these, some of these restaurants, they're pounding you with specials. They're bringing you back in. Okay, let's talk about partnerships and how you can make money working with other people. You have to think funnel business to you. Think, who would partner with me and why? What's in it for me? That's the best acronym in business, W-I-I-F-M. With me. What's that? With them. Exactly right. With <coughs> By the way, there's an old Dale Carnegie story about when you're talking to a seller or a buyer, they've got written on their forehead, what's in it for me? What's in it for me? When you're talking to someone, they want to know, oh, that's great, what's in it for me? They know what's in it for you. They know there's commission involved. What's in it for me as a buyer? What's in it for me as a seller? If I'm working with a buyer, I'm going to prove to them I'm an expert, and I'm going to save them more than the 3% that they think they can make by going to the listing agent. I'll negotiate stronger than that for them. And if push really came to shove, and it really came down to that, you could legally share a part of your commission. Because something's better than nothing. Because without these, we don't make money. This is where we got to end up, however we get there. Whether it starts with a 1% on a sale, 3% on a buy, this is where we have to end up. Okay? And everybody's fighting for the same business now. Let's talk about some targets. When you go hunting, when you shoot a pistol, you shoot at a target. You're not just out there shooting at trees and the ground and the sky. There's a target you're going after. Business is no different. We need to define our targets. What are some target businesses that could partner with us that we could do a reciprocal or a reciprocity agreement with? How about insurance companies? Every time you get a buyer that doesn't know what insurance company to go to, who do you take them to? Who do you send them to? Everybody knows an insurance person, but have you ever asked them to send you somebody? No. Why not? I don't know, that was dumb of me. That's smart. Okay, hold on, it gets better. How about your local storage facility? How about say, look, I'm in, I'm in the real estate business. I meet people all the time that are they're remodeling their home, they're downsizing, upsizing. Could I put some of my business cards here and in turn refer your business to them? You could put that in your newsletter. You could put that on a posting. Hey, local storage facility has a special. If you're thinking about moving, I recommend Cube Smart on Bel Air. You're giving them information, proving yourself to be an expert. You're giving something to somebody that maybe they were thinking about that day. How about landscapers and pool maintenance people? They're always the ones that know when somebody's moving. Why? They're canceling their service. Got a local landscaper, got a local pool company, asking for business. Saying, listen, I'm gonna give you some business cards. If you see a for sale bounder sign, go up, hand one of my cards up. If you're cutting somebody's grass, they're talking about moving. You see them boxing stuff up, hand them one of my business cards. I'll give you a referral fee. It's legal. What's Why would you not do that? Is it 250? What's the max? I'll figure it out. Oh, sure. Whatever it is. 
gift card, donation to some charity. It can get way more than 250 I think it's 250 But it could be way more than that. How about mortgage brokers? I love this part. We've got mortgage brokers that are partnering up with us. Mike Fernbach just put a $400,000 deal in title that a mortgage broker gave him. Gave him the lead. We've got a deal in title right now that was referred to us by our mortgage broker. You know, for years I'd get frustrated because I feel like all these companies are feeding off of our table. Title companies, inspection companies, mortgage companies, insurance companies. Why not call those people and go to lunch and say, listen, I'm looking for someone to partner with. I've been giving you business for 12 years, 10 years, 5 years. Camelot's been giving you business for 20 years, 30 years. I'd like to get some of your business in return. Do you know people get home inspections done before they put their home on the market a lot of times? Why not call some inspectors on that list that HCAD uh, or HAR produces and say, hey, just want to introduce myself. I'm looking for a new inspection company to send business to, but I'm looking for someone that will send business to me too. Now, I know you got to prove to me you're an expert. I need to do the same for you. When can we meet? Coffee, lunch, whatever. Come in here. Come see our office. Let me meet you somewhere for a Starbucks. Start thinking. Work smart. This is a market to work smart in. Now I'm going to give you the million dollar deal. I want every one of you guys to find five agents outside of the city that are top producers. Introduce yourself. Tell them you're an inner loop expert. You know what people in Katy, in Sugarland, the Woodlands, the Missouri City, the Pearland think inside the loop? Oh my God, is that congested? Oh my God, why would anybody want to live there? Are those one-way streets? I don't know Montrose from the Heights. I don't know Meyerland from Montrose. I don't know River Oaks from Oak Forest. They don't. Find five people that you can develop a relationship with on a lineable or through an email and simply say to them, listen, I specialize inside the loop. If you ever have a buyer or a seller in that area, not only will I give you a referral fee, but I'll take excellent care of that person. Other real estate agents can be a greater source of business for you than all your advertising put together. What is the normal um, referral, fee? referral fee? 20 to 25%. They want 25, give it to them. Because it's 75%, you wouldn't have gotten otherwise. Here's how I look at referral fees. I love this. This is a better way to think about it. Because when you start thinking about 20 or 25% after your split with me, it starts getting frustrating. Here's how I look at it. Because I've got this one company, Fast Experts, that they take 25% off the top. But they usually give pretty good leads. So to me, instead of me thinking, crap, i got to give them 25%, I just say to myself, well, that's really a $300,000 deal that I get 100% of. I'd do it that way. So it's a million dollar deal and 25% comes off the top, $750,000 deal. It's a $500,000 deal, 25% off the top. Get the math? That's how I do it. Okay, we all want to divert costs. Find some of these people that are doing advertising and see if on a small scale basis you can partner up with them. So is there a list of people you could do that with? Like could you do it with a home warranty company? You can do it with anybody you want. It's just a question whether they'll buy into it or not. It's called a strategic business partnership right. and a shared marketing agreement. The smartest way to work over the next 90 days is find some of these people that are already advertising, ask them if you can partner with them, invest a little bit of money with yourself, but if they're not advertising, just ask them what it would take for you to be their go-to realtor, your dry cleaners, where you get your oil change, all of that. It costs nothing to ask, and you never know where your next deal is coming from. By the way, custom home builders. A lot of times people are building a custom home. Pick three custom home builders. Meet them. Take them to lunch. Get to know them. Say, look, when somebody's building a custom home, a lot of times they have a home to sell. I'll do the listing for 1% if they're buying a home for you. And we'll give you full service brokerage marketing plan. What have you got to lose? Somebody building a $2 million home likely has a $1 million home to sell. Somebody building a $1 million home likely has a $350,000 town home to sell. Think outside the box. Be creative. Other agents are the biggest source in the world. I'll tell you a quick story and that training's over. 
Twice I went broke in real estate. Both times went in the car business. Some of you know that. The last time was in the early 90s, and I worked, which is now where Carabas uh, and Mia's is. There was, a, there was a Jaguar dealership there. And we moved over to the Southwest Freeways. Now Momentum, Jaguar, and Porsche. Actually, that moved. Jaguar, Rover, and Volvo, whatever. But at the time, it was Jaguar, Porsche, Saab. Okay? And I sold Jaguars. And so people would come into the dealership from different doors. And the Volvo guy might grab a customer that wanted a Jaguar. The Saab saleswoman might grab a customer that wanted a Jaguar. So I'd go up to him and I'd say, hey, if you get a Jaguar customer, bring him to me. I'll give you 20 or 25% of my commission the second that car drives out of the dealership. Now, other salespeople got upset because I was funneling business to myself. <laughs> but the agent or the salesperson that was selling the Volvos, if Anna came in and she says, hey, I'm looking for Jaguar, I say, she would immediately get turned out of the salesperson who would then say, hey, the top Jaguar salesperson owner is a friend of mine. Let me text them, tell them we're coming. I'll walk you over to introduce you. Now, I got somebody that already knows I'm a top salesperson, walked in the wrong door, and a salesperson's hand delivering that person to me. This is what they'll do when you find some top people out in Sugar Land and these outlying areas. How often do we hear about people that want to move inside the loop because the commute is killing them? Any idea what's going on with our freeways right now? Are you kidding me right now? Find a realtor in Katy. Find one in Sugar Land. Find one in Pearland. Find one in Missouri City. Just go 20 miles out, find some top people, and ask, who do you refer your business to? And if the standard referral fee is 20, give them 30. Win their business. Do you think, um, like people like Cobalt Bank or Remax, they may be referring to the, their inner city groups? Maybe we should go to non. You know? Do whatever you want to do. I don't care. Just, uh, I'd go to Remax number one because those are the top salespeople typically. Because they're paying a desk fee, big desk fee, five to six grand a month. That's a syndication, basically. Yeah, I'd probably start with some smaller pop, mom and pop shops. But I wouldn't mind going to the big ones, too. Look, you want to refer to somebody that's a pro. Who's the pro in Cobo Banker inside the loop? Who's the top Century 21 person inside the loop? Really? There are none. Trust me. I'm a co-op with a Cobo Banker agent ever inside the loop. In Bel Air, I have our buddy Eric Campbell. But I don't know of any top Cobo Banker agents inside the loop. I don't have any top Century. I'd go to the big box brands. The ERAs, the, the Century 21s. Especially Century 21. Especially Century 21. The yeah. Yeah. Oh, they don't know it. They have no presence inside the loop. None. That's why Century 21 wanted to buy our little Camelot office a couple of years ago. They wanted to get a foothold inside the loop. It's hard to learn this business over here. Deed restrictions and historic societies. and Every block is a different school system. It's not like that out in, out in Katy and Sugarland. Not as much. Okay, any questions? Any questions?